Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. We have been discussing IS 456-2000. Part 1 and Part 2 of this series has been completed. In Part 2, we have done till the column pedestal. This is the Part 3 explanation. So, in this video, let's start with the transverse reinforcement of column. If you want to look into Part 1 and Part 2 of this series, the link will be given in the description box. You can check that link and then watch that. So, without delay, let's begin now. The transverse reinforcement is given in class number. 26.5.3.2 So in this class, A section is for general. Reinforced concrete compression member shall have transverse or helical reinforcement so disposed that every longitudinal bar nearest to the compression face has a effective lateral support against buckling subject to provisions in B. We need to look into the provisions in B, arrangement of transverse reinforcement. The effective lateral support is given by transverse reinforcement either in the form of circular rings capable of taking up circumferential tension or by polygonal links lateral ties with internal angles not exceeding 135 degree. The ends of the transverse reinforcement shall be properly anchored. For this anchorage we need to look into class number 26.2.2.4. So as we all know what is transverse reinforcement in columns we have two types of reinforcement one is longitudinal reinforcement and other one is transverse reinforcement in columns. Longitudinal bars are the vertical bars which are mainly provided to resist the load which is coming on the column. These transverse reinforcements are provided mainly to support the longitudinal bars and to place the longitudinal bars in position and also it helps to resist the shear force which is coming on the column. So this is the main purpose of providing transverse reinforcement in column. Now let's look into the class 26.2.2.4 anchoring shear reinforcement. So in this we need to look into the section B. Here it is A that is for incline bars. We need to check the section B that is for stirrups. Notwithstanding any of the provisions of this standard in case of secondary reinforcement such as stirrups and transverse ties. So as we have discussed before we have longitudinal bars and transverse reinforcement in columns. So this transverse reinforcement can be called as a secondary reinforcement and the longitudinal bars will be called as a main reinforcement. In case of secondary reinforcement such as stirrups and transverse ties, complete development length and anchorage shall be deemed to have been provided when the bar is bent through an angle of at least 90 degree round a bar of at least its own diameter and its continue beyond the end of the curve for a length of at least 8 diameters or when the bar is bent through an angle of 135 degree and is continued beyond the end of the curve for a length of at least 6 bar diameters or when the bar is bent through an angle of 180 degree and is continued beyond the end of the curve for a length of at least 4 bar diameters. So here we have to make a note of it. So 90 degree round bar or at least its own diameter and is continued beyond the end of the curve for a length of at least 8 diameter or when the bar is bent through an angle of 135 degree. So these three conditions we need to satisfy and it is continued beyond the end of the curve for a length of at least 6 bar diameter or when the bar is bent through at an angle of 180 degree and is continued beyond the end of the curve for a length of at least 4 bar diameters. Now let's look into arrangement of transverse reinforcement. If the longitudinal bars are not spaced more than 75 mm on either side, transverse reinforcement need only to go round corner and alternate bars for the purpose of providing effective lateral support. So if the longitudinal bars are not spaced more than 75 mm on either side then we need to provide the transverse reinforcement need only to go round corner and alternate bars for the purpose of providing lateral support. So for this we need to check the figure 8. In figure 8 if we see the distance between two longitudinal bars is 75 mm. If it is not spaced more than 75 mm then it has to the transverse bar has to go round corner and alternate bar the outer bars are connecting with the transverse reinforcement and this bar this bar is not having any transverse reinforcement so the condition is if 
the longitudinal bars are not spaced more than 75 mm we have to provide the lateral tie arrangement which is shown in this figure 8 next if the longitudinal bar spaced at a distance of not exceeding 48 times the diameter of the tie are effectively tied in two directions additional longitudinal bars in between these bar need to be tied in one direction by open ties see figure 9 let's look into figure 9 in figure 9 it is given as see this is the longitudinal bars if the spacing between these two bars are not spaced more than 48 times the dia of the lateral ties then we have to provide the transverse reinforcement like this to connect all the outer bars and then for this longitudinal bar we have to provide the lateral tie which is open it is like a link it is not a closed tie it is like a single link single tie we have to provide open tie that is what mentioned in that class open tie reinforcement has to be provided if it satisfies this condition next where the longitudinal reinforcing bar in a compression member are placed in more than one row effective lateral support to the longitudinal bars in the inner rows may be assumed to have been provided if the transverse reinforcement is provided for the outermost row in accordance with 26.5.3.2 and no bar in inner row is closer to the nearest compression face than three times the diameter of the largest bar in the inner row that is given in figure 10. Let's look into figure 10. The outermost layer has been provided with the lateral support as per the class. No bar in the inner row is closer to the nearest compression face than three times the diameter of the largest bar in the inner row. So if that satisfies the condition, we have to provide the reinforcement arrangement which is shown in the figure 10. Next, where the longitudinal bars in a compression member are grouped and each group adequately tied with transverse reinforcement in accordance with class number 26.5.3.2 the transverse reinforcement for the compression member as a whole may be provided on the assumption that each group is a single longitudinal bar for the purpose of determining the pitch and diameter of the transverse reinforcement in accordance with 26.3.2 the diameter of such transverse reinforcement need not however exceed 20 mm see figure 11 let's look into figure 11 see here these four bars are considered as a group so for this group there is a individual transverse reinforcement is provided similarly for this four group individual transverse reinforcement is provided so here we are assuming this group as a single longitudinal bar and we have provided the transverse reinforcement as a whole so this helps to determining the pitch and diameter of the lateral ties so here if the longitudinal bars are provided in a group Group. for each group there will be a transverse reinforcement and as a whole we need to provide the transverse reinforcement next let's look into pitch and diameter the pitch of transverse reinforcement shall not be more than the least of the following distances first one is least lateral dimension of the compression member next one is 16 times the smallest diameter of the longitudinal bar tied and the last one is 300 mm so among these three whichever is the least that we need to consider as a pitch of lateral ties for example if the size of the column is 300 by 600 then the least lateral dimension of the compression member will be 300 mm and 16 times the smallest diameter of the longitudinal reinforcement bar let's assume the longitudinal bar smallest longitudinal bar is 12 mm 16 times 12 that is 192 mm and here it is given as 300 mm third condition is 300 mm so least lateral dimension of the compression member is 300 mm and smallest 16 times the smallest diameter of the longitudinal reinforcement bar that is 192 mm and third condition is 300 mm so among these these three we need to use the least value here least value is 192 mm next let's look into the diameter the diameter of polygonal links or lateral tie shall not be less than one fourth of the diameter of largest longitudinal bar and in no case less than 16 mm next let's look into the helical reinforcement the pitch of helical reinforcement helical reinforcement shall be of regular formation with the turns of the helix 
spaced evenly and its end shall be anchored properly by providing one and half extra turns of the spiral bar. So this is applicable for the circular column. Circular column we need to provide the helical reinforcement. For uh, rectangular or square column we provide lateral ties or transverse reinforcement. So for circular column we have to provide the helical reinforcement. Where an increased load on the column and the strength of the helical reinforcement is allowed for the pitch of helical turns shall be not more than 75 mm, not more than one sixth of the core diameter of the column, not less than 25 mm, not less than three times the diameter of the steel bar forming the helix. So in other cases, the requirements of 26.5.3.2 shall be complied with. So apart from the pitch rest all, we need to follow the class 26.5.3.2. So only we need to consider this pitch just given as helical turn shall not be more than 75 mm, not more than one sixth of the core diameter of the column, not less than 25 mm, not less than the three times the diameter of the steel bar forming the helix. The diameter of the helical reinforcement shall be in accordance with 26.5.3.2 C2. As we have discussed the class diameter of the transverse reinforcement, the same can be applicable for the helical reinforcement as well. Next, let's look into expansion joint structures in which marked changes in plan dimensions take place abruptly shall be provided with expansion on joints at the section where such changes occur. Expansion joints shall be so provided that the necessary movement occurs with a minimum resistance at the joint. The structures adjacent to the joint should preferably be supported on separate columns or walls but not necessarily on separate foundations. The reinforcement shall not extend across an expansion joint and the break between the section shall be complete. So this is very important one expansion joint in buildings. So expansion joint shall be provided when the necessary movement occurs with a minimum resistance at the joint. So if the building will be more length then the, due to the temperature changes, the weather changes, environmental conditions, the structure tend to expand and contract. So for this reason we need to provide the expansion joint if the building having the length of 45 meter. The building is exceeding the length of 45 meter. So so at that point, we need to provide the expansion joint in order to avoid this temperature and weather changes. Weather. So the structure adjacent to the joint should preferably be supported on a separate columns. At the joint, it will act as a like two separate building, but it it will be joined together by using the expansion joint. Reinforcement shall not extend across an expansion joint and the break between the sections shall be complete. So the, the two sections, two structural sections has to be separated completely. So that there, there should not be any reinforcement extension across an expansion joint. The details as to the length of the structure where the expansion joint have to be provided can be determined after taking into consideration of of various factors such as temperature, exposure to weather, the time and the season of laying the concrete. Normally, structures exceeding 45 meter in length are designed with one or more expansion joint. As I have told you before, the structure exceeding 45 meter in length or designed with one or more expansion joint. However, in view of the large number of factors involved in deciding the location, spacing and nature of expansion joint, the provision of expansion joint in reinforced cement concrete structure should be left to the discretion of the designer. So the, the engineer whoever is designing the structure has to be properly provide the expansion joint at proper Place. So they have to decide where we can provide. For example, if the structure is of 80 meter length, then at 40 meter of length, we need to provide the expansion joint. It should not exceed the single length of the building shall not exceed 45 meter. So if the building length is 80 meter, then we need to provide the expansion joint at the place of 40 meter. So that we need to check according to the structure. Uh, either it can be even 45, 35, we can divide. If the total length is 80 meter, instead of providing at the center we can even provide 45 meter at one side and another side we can make it as 35 meter but it should not exceed 45 meter is 3414 gives the design consideration which need to be examined and provided for so this is 3414 will be 
giving the exact details about this expansion joint and according to that we need to provide the expansion joint so friends let's end up here in the next part of this series let's continue with the other classes i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box and if you like the content do hit the like button and also share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you for watching